three o'clock. And I'm Amy Goldman from the AP3 Center. Happy to welcome you to today's Demo Loan Community of Practice, where we'll, we will be learning about school from our speaker, Ben Shugler, who I believe is the inventor of Skoog, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that. So just a few reminders. To see the captions, click on the CC button on your control panel. Please enter questions and comments in the chat window, and we will uh, be sure to get to those. For upcoming events, you should be checking in regularly at the at3center.net events page. Please complete post-webinar surveys when you receive them because we need to know your thoughts and what your hot topics are for future webinars. Learner objectives. At the conclusion of today's webinar, you will be able to describe the unique features of school, schoolmusic.com a multi-sensory learning tool. You'll be able to list three tips and tricks to using Skoog and identify available training and resources. And you will also hear today about discounts and deals just for the AT Act programs and their affiliates. So uh, without further ado, take it away. Ben. Hello there. Uh, yes, good, good afternoon. Good evening from me. I'm calling in from the UK. My name's Dr. Ben Shogler. I'm one of the inventors of Skoog. Uh, there are two of the, as the original founders, myself and Dr. David Scalina. And I'm here to show you all, all about it. So this is Skoog. So this is a tactile Bluetooth uh, device and it's a multi-sensory tool. It began as uh, specifically an accessible music device, but over the last 10 years has grown to be used in lots of different ways um, by people uh, wanting to use it creatively. Uh, it's an accessible physical interface and it comes with uh, several apps that are free uh, and that we're making them very easy to deploy in a kind of lending library situation. There's no uh, registration required or anything like that. Once you have a physical device, wherever that physical device goes, it can, uh, you can download the uh, associated apps for free on any iOS device and use it with that device. So that makes it really easy to deploy in that sense. So this is Skoog. It's a small uh, tactile cube and it links to the iPad by Bluetooth and it connects to an app and it enables you to uh, engage in a variety of kind of musical uh, type activities or actually everything from uh, multi-sensory sound activities right through to playing in orchestras and bands. We have students and users who use Skoog uh, as their instrument of choice uh, and they may have cerebral palsy or uh, Down syndrome or be autistic uh, and they use Skoog as their musical instrument in the band they play in or we have users that um, are uh, maybe have uh, not uh, are less able and they use Skoog for multi-sensory learning or play enjoyment and uh, an engaging way of interacting so um, I want to uh, show you Skoog but also with some examples of how people have been using it out in the field so I'm going to do a mixture of to camera here but I'll also be sharing my iPad screen it, when I'm showing you a different feature on the app. So I'll need to switch to sharing my screen and I'll switch back to playing the device. So first thing, the most important about very, very tactile. And this is one of the most important things. It's, it's very tactile, it's very engaging, and that tactility is one of the most important things about it as a, as a, as a device, as, some, as a piece of uh, accessible technology. It makes it incredibly intuitive to use. Once someone touches it and feels it, they know how to play it because of its softness. It invites pressing and squeezing. It can be used with any part of the body. So here, I can play it with my face. 
an elbow. It is also sensitive everywhere, not just on these button sort of domes. The button domes uh, are more invitations to press. It's actually sensitive to how it's squeezed all over. And this means that you can play it with your hands like this, if you're able to make uh, defined presses on each side, or you can play it just by switching and interacting with it. You don't need a high level of coordination or skill. So it's a very easy to use physically device and the apps and the way that they uh, support a range of music activities are also very easy to use and aimed at uh, individuals with no musical skill or training in terms of piloting the app or helping a user use it or for the user themselves. So it's, um, I think it's important to just to highlight one quick thing is that so the, the way that it works in terms of unlocking creative potential is particularly in music, the, the barriers that people face are the actual instruments themselves. They're very fiddly to use, they require, require a high lo level of skill and coordination. And so Skoog, as you can see from me, to make a sound, I just need to interact with the cube in some way and it makes a sound. And the second big problem people face then is what sounds to make. So having to know tunings or musical notation. Now you can hear, all the notes that I'm playing seem to fit together. And so what the software does is it uses specific tunings and presets to make it, uh, to give you a kind of musical uh, set of sounds that are going to work. So you don't have to worry about the notes. And this opens up a huge range of different kind of creative potential activities. So um, it's a soft tactile ben, blue ben, device. Ben, yep. it's actually very hard to hear any sounds that it's making right now. Okay. So I know you're going to give us a, a live demo, but I just yeah. wanted to let you know. Okay, I can I can turn the volume up. I was I was conscious I didn't want to uh, make it too loud for anyone. But let's just address that here. So is that easier to hear? Um, I'm going to assume it is. So. And Do it again, please. I'm not hearing it. You're not hearing anything. Um, oh dear, that's that's a shame. Um, let me just try going into a screen sharing mode. Let's let's do this and see if because when Amy and I tried this earlier, you could hear it. So let's, in the screen share, yeah. I don't know whether this is a. So now I'm going to share my iPad screen, which will show the app for Skoog. So here's the app. Can you hear it now? Oh, nice and loud. Okay. It seems that we can only uh, hear it when it's doing the screen sharing, which is slightly annoying. So you saw me there in the camera feed, and I had the, the Skoog device and I was pressing it. And in the app, you get color feedback. Where you're pressing it, which side? Each side is denoted by the den denoted by a color. So very quickly, I just want to give you uh, these examples of, of how to how to use it for different things. And first thing uh, to note is it's very um, simple to select uh, different things in terms of instruments. You have a, a guitar up here, which gives you a range of instruments you can select. It is also compatible with a range of other apps, which we'll mention shortly. And it also has these preset scales, which I can just change, you know, choose a letter and it changes the notes and that's it. And you don't, whenever you choose a scale, all those notes will fit together, they're pre-tuned. And what this opens up is uh, kind of initially, so an example would be, you can see on our YouTube channel, uh, uh, more of someone who maybe has quite profound and multiple disabilities, uh, individuals who, who may be blind and or have a, a range of cognitive and physical challenges um, and just by playing with the school cubes physically it, it, different playing with the, the device in different ways is more of a multi-sensory kind of activity you can do at home so it's something ben, that family, yes then you can take the audio from the app down a notch 
I, I can't, is it too now too loud, is it? It's a little too loud. How's that? Okay, and be sure to let it finish playing before you start talking. Okay. Thanks. The, it has a range of preset scales that are, are easy to access in the menu that are really open up a range of just sort of sensory exploration, playing with sound. It will always be musical. You can choose different instrument sounds. So here, let's choose something else. Let's choose a flute sound here. So it's, it's very, a very simple menu system, compatible, completely compatible with voiceover as well and switch control in that sense. But normally the, the app is often piloted by a parent or a carer or a teacher where it's set up for a user and then they play with it. So it can be this simple, just playing with sound uh, way of using it. The next uh, feature that I'd like to show you is that it unlocks a whole world of kind of music for leisure that otherwise would not be possible in terms of being able to play with music that you love. Now, what it does is it automatically can integrate with Spotify or Apple Music and it will tune the notes of the Skoog so you can play with songs in your playlists. Now this is, uh, I think, a really unique feature and a really relevant one for service users. So it actually, yes, you can play with it as a multi-sensory kind of sound and device for you know, in in encouraging cause and effect, but you can actually play along with your playlists. So, and, and you know, individuals that, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're into rock and roll or reggae or classical music, whatever they're listening to, they can actually play with that music. So I'll just show you a quick example. You can see on the screen that you can see there's a song by Bobby McFerrin at the bottom, but I'll just show you how this works. So in the top menu, there is a kind of iTunes icon here, and this can show me my different libraries. There's my iTunes library, or I can look into my Spotify library. There we go. Now you need to have Spotify installed on the iOS device to use this and it will ask you to okay the link between them. But other than that, that's, 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 that's all there is to it. So I can go in here and I can choose a track. So let's, let's just try this one. And it plays track and it automatically gets the notes. able just to play along and improvise so it gives me a set of notes that are tuned to the song so let's let's change instruments so here on the instrument icon i'm going to change it to moon synth there and i'm going to try a different song let's try what should we try um a bit of classical music background the backing track on the piano you can see it's automatically set the notes now to G major and other songs I might choose so Mr. Blue Sky B flat major and so we'll automatically tune the device to the track so there's no setup required no complicated setup required on behalf of the, the users it's literally just get into your playlist and whatever music you love listening to you can play along with um, and that really opens up a lot of creativity, improvising, but just having fun and playing, you know, having fun with music as a leisure activity. Um, and again, the app, the app is free, so that there's no kind of complicated registration. So this can, you know, be used by one one service user one week and come back in, and then go straight out and be used by someone another week without the need for any kind of registration codes or anything like that. So that's um, that's I think a really important feature of the app. Uh, the next uh, feature that I'd like to show you is that when you saw on the camera before uh, each side of the Skoog has a different color and 
each color can represent a note and we can use this to actually enable people to play and learn melodies and play with transcribed music and uh, you know example is uh, there's a young lady in Wisconsin who has Down syndrome and she actually she plays as part of the marching band there and uses a skug as her instrument and she can use color based score to actually play parts in band or in orchestras so you know first thing I talked about was simple kind of multi-sensory use for individuals who may have quite profound challenges and in that sense it can be used at home to support a range of activities there and then we have playing along with Spotify playing along with popular music or songs that you like to listen to you know for leisure for fun and that's very easy to do and support and built into the software and then moving slightly further on in terms of maybe musical complexity now we're gonna I can show you there are some built-in color scores in in the app and it's in this little book icon at the top of the app here there we go and here I've got a range of kind of some classical some uh, let's do O to joy some nursery rhymes if I press a color that it shows me so yellow again orange orange green yellow blue So you can see there, it's feeding me the colors as it goes along. So it has these built-in colored scores and they enable me to play and learn particular songs, uh, some built into the app. And we also, I'll just show you on our website, we have a range of different uh, support materials. Let's pop up there. And oh, I'll just accept my cookies. And on our website, if we go to Skoog songbook, popular tunes, songs, classics, and more. Here you can see we have all kinds of things from ABBA, ACDC, Coldplay, Elvis. Got a bit of Elvis in there. If you like a bit of, if you like a bit of the King. If you love me tender. And here, let's try something else. So uh, Jesse J. And then I can have a look here. And there's a PDF that gives me something I can print out and I can follow those colors if I set the notes as they're set, as it tells me. So there's a whole range of stuff here that we've uh, transcribed over the years that people have asked for, Disney films, Christmas songs, kids songs, all kinds of stuff. So I just wanted to show you that in our support section. There is also in the support a range of different um, activity guides, PDF guides for, for using the, the, the app and the device, and lots of video tutorials on how to do that. So there's that's the, the, the place to go for help and support is our website, uh, scoogmusic.com forward slash support. And just going back to the app now. So it has some built in color following uh, songs and transcriptions that you can play around with. And also we have a range of material online for that. The, the app in terms of help also here, it has built in help on the help icon. And so that in the, closest in the menu there's a little question mark I press here and there are built-in user guides for all the main features how to choose an instrument how to set a scale and how to do the fun stuff like playing along with iTunes in the background and it gives a short description and it also has a show me the button function if I press that look it shows me the point in the menu where I need to press to get that function so there's built-in help and there are also built-in videos for that. So the sort of final kind of key function I wanted to show you was how easy it is then to use it in a slightly more advanced way with GarageBand. So GarageBand is free on iOS. It's a kind of standard music, uh, is it called a digital audio workstation, but it's a way of recording and creating your own music on, on an iPad. And so in order to use Skoog with GarageBand, one of the key things that does it enables you to use hundreds of sounds more sounds that are built that are built in GarageBand and there and all the functions that that has like recording and sampling and looping and doing all these kinds of things now in order to use Skoog with GarageBand you can see there's a MIDI icon at the top here and all you have to do is turn MIDI on turn audio off and now if I go to GarageBand let's get a song let's just let me start a new one. Tracks, here we go. 
Uh, let's do a piano. And that is me playing, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to change, start the screencast. So you saw me, it's really that simple. To use it with GarageBand, all you have to do is turn, turn the MIDI on in the SKU gap and open GarageBand and look here, I'm going to play. Oh, you won't be able to hear because I'm not in the app. <laughs> uh, that's a shame. But uh, trust me, so it's, a, it's really that simple. All you have to do is turn MIDI on and it will, it, it seamlessly integrates with GarageBand and then opens up all of those features as well. And an example of, we have Stephanie Forrest, who is a longtime Skoog user, and she used Skoog uh, with a range of different uh, apps and things. And actually, she went from using Skoog as her instrument, uh, which she learned in class, and Stephanie has cerebral palsy, and she has a physical and a, a range of uh, learning challenges. And she went from learning Skoog to then using Skoog with the musical score, in terms of the color score, playing in an orchestra. And then when she left school, she has continued on her, her journey as a musician and uses a range of different technologies now and what she does. And last year she was on tour in Norway and Singapore. So um, everything from a fun multi-sensory sound play and musical play through to jamming along with your kind of favorite um, songs in uh, Spotify or Apple Music. And we find that within the or, or, uh, users with autism or in, uh, on the autistic spectrum uh, often really enjoy uh, the playing with uh, pop music or, or music that they are enjoying listening to anyway. That's a really engaging activity and for everyone really. Uh, we then looked at uh, using colour based built in songs and coloured sc colour score to be able to play melodies and take a more kind of progressive approach. And then it integrates with GarageBand and allows you to use it in all those ways as well, to record, to compose your own music, to play, you know, and to, to perform to a very high level. So those were the kind of key things that I wanted to show you and share with you. And what I really um, hope to kind of communicate from that was over the years, we've, we've really seen Skoog used across a, a huge range of abilities from individuals who really have quite profound challenges, sensory, physical, and cognitive. So it's great if you have, it's, you know, it's great for services that have a range of different service users. Right, so everything from profound challenges right through to more able individuals or uh, you know, people who are pursuing careers in music who may have a physical disability or a, an, a, a sensory challenge or, or a combination of them. So it really um, is a, a very adaptable platform. Now, I just wanted to check what time it is. I'm not sure how much time we've got left. So we've got a good amount of time left. Um, I'm not sure, Amy, if you welcome questions. Absolutely. Uh, if, if you're ready for questions and if people well, have any, do. Uh, I, I want to, because we've got, we've got a little bit of time. So, I want to just to cover up a couple of things. First thing is that we are offering uh, some discounts at the moment. So if you go to scoog.scoogmusic.com forward slash library, and I'm sure Amy will be able to share the link out afterwards. So that's scoog.scoogmusic.com forward slash library. We have a special page for AT libraries and we have a discount there. For individual orders, it's a discount of uh, $10 uh, on each unit. And that normally that's $200, so that makes it $190. Um, but we're also offering, which I think is quite a, a, a free carry case for orders of six or more. So if you purchase multiple Skoogs, we can provide a free carry case, which uh, looks like this. So it's a tough neoprene carry case with a zipper that will carry keep the screw keep it safe allow you to pop your charging cable in there it's an important point it charges via a micro usb cable and it has it comes with its own cable but it's also compatible with any any micro usb cable um and so if, you know if you lose a cable you don't have to get a very specialized one it's just any standard micro usb cable will do to charge it um it charges in a few hours and importantly the playing time 
once fully charged is just over 10 hours of continuous use. So if someone was, um, say, loaning school, loaning school from the library for a week, if they played it uh, an hour a day, they wouldn't need to charge it even for that whole week. So it really does last a very long time, which you find, we find is a, an important feature, particularly in classroom use um, and also use at home. So you don't want to have to be worrying if you, you know, or have I charged it each day. The playing time does last a very long time and it will go into, it will, if it's not being used, it will go into a sleep mode if it's not being pressed and touched. So it really will last for a, a good length of time before it needs to be charged, which I think is a, another useful feature. So we do have some special discounts uh, on at the moment. You can always email us at info at or you can contact Kevin uh, at AT, Kevin at scoogmusic.com or myself, Ben at scoogmusic.com. And if you're interested in putting a package together for the library, uh, we're keen to support that as well. And like I say, for orders of six or more, we can offer free carry cases and if it's or if there's other elements that you feel you require then we can talk about that as well um a quick look at the underside of skoog so you can see here in the base it actually has a kind of circular kind of flat ring and that is designed to be used with a suction mount like this this is from ram mounts it's a standard suction mount with a ball joint that can be mounted into a range of different mounting solutions um, we find that uh, so it doesn't have its it doesn't have its own bespoke mount. It's compatible with a standard suction mount that then can become part of an of a user's standard mounting system by a simple clamp or a ball connector joint. So we can provide details of that as well. But uh, important to note that it can be mounted. So for some users, they may need it mounted at an angle so they can access it with a hand or their feet or their head, depending on what range of movement they have and how they best like to interact with things. So I just wanted to show you one more of the apps that we have. So I've showed you the Scoog Music app. There is also another app that we have called Scratch. And that app allows uh, a, is something really cool. And what it allows you to do is, it allows you to use any sound and put sounds onto the Scoog of your own. So not necessarily musical sounds, these can be animal sounds, sound effects, your own voice, lots of scope for play there, lots of scope for fun, and lots of scope for creativity. Again, very, very easy to use, and again, free to download, and all you need to, is your Scoog to use it. So I'll just like to show you that just now, and then I think we can open it up to questions. I'm gonna just share my screen again, so you can see what's happening in the app. So I'll just move to a screen share. There we go. And right. So now I just need to find my Scratch app. There it is. Scoog Scratch with a K. So open this up. So I'm just going to clear that. So the way this app works is simple uh, touch screen menus. If I touch and hold the screen here, pops open a menu for the app. Now there's different things I can do here. The middle and the bottom one clears it and that clears it. And what I have here is five sort of square blocks on the screen which are actually buffers for recording sound. So if I go, uh, now we should be able to, so that was just so it's linked to the scoog so each time you press the side of the scoog you will get the different sample that you've recorded on that color playing and with that, you can just play around with different sounds, different recordings. You can also load sounds into the app that are pre-done. Um, and they can, be, they can be sound effects, they could be animal sounds, they could be nature sounds, they could be phonemes, they could be words. There's lots of different ways this is being used in schools, but also just really fun at home to play around with different sounds. We do recommend that uh, if, you, if an individual is non-verbal, but will vocalize, it's great to record their vocalizations in and allow them to 
physically play with sounds that they're making and that can be a really uh, supportive and engaging uh, experience and really great for multi-sensory learning. So I just wanted to show you that app, Scoog Scratch, as a little extra. It's not poor crass there. There are in fact um, two other apps that work, that, that Scoog, well, it, it'll work with any MIDI compatible music app and there are hundreds of those, but of its own apps, there is also Scoog Access which is, I think after questions, we'll maybe have a look to see if we can uh, show you a bit about that. It's a very simple, uh, basic AAC app that connects to Scoog and allows you to use the uh, onboard text-to-speech in iOS to put phrases or words on the different sides. And then there is also Swift Playgrounds. So Swift Playgrounds is Apple's uh, platform for learning to code on an iPad. And we have a uh, playground for Scoog which uh, opens up a whole world of possibilities and uh, it depending on what you, you know, whether you want to learn to code or just get inside the Scoog and use it for different things uh, have uh, all kinds of things going the teacher up in Minnesota who uses the Swift Playgrounds Scoog app um, to enable his students to drive robots and drones with the Scoog which is a great experience to unlock, a, a really fun activity and a great multi-sensory learning going on as well then could be used at home for a variety of things. So I think I'll, I'll pause there because otherwise I'll, I will uh, go on all night and, and, and no, no one will get a word in. So Amy, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions now and I, I, don't, I don't want to overload people um, and if anyone has any. Uh, okay, yes, we do have a question. Okay. Does the Scoog have an internal speaker or is it playing through an external Bluetooth speaker or does it use the iPad speaker? So the Scoog uses the iPad so speaker. So the, the Scoog is a, is a sensor, essentially. It's an interface and it then it connects to the apps on, on the iPad and sends the control information to it. And it's the, it's the app in the, on the iPad that is making the sound. So the sound comes out of the iPad. Great, thank you. Uh, that is the only question on, uh, so far on our chat. Well, just to um, remind you that we do have the discount running uh, on scoogmusic.com forward slash library of uh, $10 per single unit. And we're also adding in there the free carry case, which is normally $25. So um, as a, and I think a really useful accessory if you're if, you know, loading the Scoog out. And we do have uh, schools, particularly now in the current situation who are, are learning, you know, learning the Scoog out to different students at home that they have there. And that's, that's really kind of um, making a, a real difference in how that's, that they're being used. Uh, very easy to clean, a simple antibacterial wipe. Um, it's made of polyurethane foam with a polyurethane foam rubber coating. And so it's, uh, it's just a simple wipe will clean it. And uh, don't, it's not, don't, don't put it in a bath. It's not water, <laughs> but it's okay with um, saliva or, you know, uh, drool, these kind of things. It will, it will tolerate that quite, yeah. quite well. The sensors are bedded deep inside uh, but yeah just clean it with an antibacterial wipe and it's very very durable as well so um, just to show you here I can whack it like that squish it hard chuck it about um, it is designed for quite robust use as well as being um, sensitive and usable in different ways one of the uh, questions we're often asked is how sensitive can it be? So it usually requires about 500 grams of pressure. Now, in its most sensitive, I can really sort of play it, but just the weight of my hand, uh, the weight of a hand uh, is, is enough to activate it. Um, and depending on how you can develop that uh, interaction with the way you can position it for the individual, we find that it can be used by, by a really wide range of abilities. Um, I will just show you very quickly. I saw a question come up there, so I'll answer that in yeah. a second. I just want to show you how to adjust the sensitivity in the app. So I'll just, because that's an important thing to know. 
So let's do this. And here we are. So we'll go back to our app, back to our Scoog app. Here we go. Now, in the Scoog app, there's a cog wheel here. And this is where we set the sensitivity. And it's very easy. So the key one here is the activation threshold. When the activation threshold is low at one, that's when we find that for the majority of users, having it at three or four is the most convenient because then you can carry it around and it won't trigger, um, it, you know, won't go off unintentionally. But if you need it to be more sensitive, activation threshold one, sensitivity high, and then you can set the response high. So this will be the maximum sensitivity setting. There, you can play it. I'll just go back to the camera view now. So you can see here. So there we go. So we should be back into the camera view. But now you can't hear it, can you? <laughs> no, but really just, I'm not, and it's making a, making a sound so it can be very very sensitive if required it is it, when it's set at this more sensitive so it really is very very sensitive in that in that mode but like i say you can adjust it and set the threshold to three or four and that would suit the a, a wide range of users and it's not unless you really need a very high sensitivity that you turn that down now, uh, what was the uh, question that came up? So we, we actually have a couple in queue right now. Okay. One is, are there apps that allow you to compose or play music interactively? Thinking about people who are socially isolated, who uh, may welcome an activity to engage in. In terms of apps that you can play uh, remotely with other people? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Well, there's two. There's a couple of things on that. You can use GarageBand to um, share songs with other people, so you could record a part of what something you've done and share that with someone else, and that will work. As you'll be aware uh, in these days, that there are sometimes latency issues with playing music using Zoom or something like that. But there is there is a free platform called Jam Kazam. J-A-M, K-A-Z, A-M, Jam Kazam. And that, you need a, a wired ethernet connection to the device that you're using, but that has latency-free uh, ability to play music live with other people. Um, but the, I think the, a lot of the ways I've seen people playing together in this time has been uh, people recording a section of something and sending it to a friend uh, and then them adding something to that and then sharing it back or sharing it on as part of a group. Uh, I'm a musician myself. I've certainly been doing that with uh, people who I would normally uh, practice or perform with. We've been sharing music in that way. And GarageBand is a great platform for that and it's free for iOS. Great. Our next question is, does it have a synthesizer for quality of tones? Yes, it has its own, it has its own built-in synthesizer sounds, which are um, high quality. And it will also connect to say GarageBand as an app, which has very well-modeled, good quality sounds and everything from classical pianos right through to space laser synths. You could also use it with uh, Roly's uh, Seaboard app, which is a very high quality uh, synth app. It will work with any of the Moog apps and actually Moog have been giving away uh, a couple of their apps uh, during the COVID pandemic. And they are really, really high quality synthesis uh, apps as I'm sure uh, you'll be aware. Great. Um, yeah, so there is another question. Are there more games and apps for Skoog or just the ones from your website? Uh, it's just the, just the ones from our developer site. So there's Skoog uh, Music, there's Skoog Scratch, there's Skoog Access, and there's Swift Playgrounds for Skoog. It will also connect, connect to a Mac OS 
device using Skoog's Bluetooth MIDI app, but it is also compatible with um, any MIDI, any Bluetooth MIDI compatible music app, such as GarageBand or Seaboard by Roly or Minimoog or any of these other musical kind of um, platform apps that will accept a, a MIDI controller, Skoog is compatible with, with, with those. Great. So people who know me know I'm a speech language pathologist. So I'm particularly interested in your Skoog access. If you can do a short demo yeah. of that for us. This is when I hope that, oh, here we go, Skoog access. There we are. So I'm just going to, Give me a second, after I set up, I'm just going to quit, quit the other apps that I have running in the background. Okay, and now I'm going to go into the screen share mode. I'm just going to turn off my Skoog. So, there we go. All right, I'm going to go into the screen share mode and hopefully give you a demo of Skoog Access. So this was, uh, again, it's a free, it's a free app. Um, and this was something that some teachers and uh, therapists asked us if we could do. Um, so you can put words and you can record words and phrases or load you know, a speech onto it using the Scratch sampling app I showed you. But Skoog Access here. Hello there. Hello. I touch the Skoog icon to connect my Skoog and I'm just going to connect it here. Turn the Bluetooth on on my Skoog, connect it in. There we go. Now, yellow, red, red, blue, yellow, green, yellow. So can you hear that, Amy? Yes, I can. So I'm going to touch the green. Green, yellow. And the yellow, and then I'm going to touch the red. Red. And then I'm going to touch the blue. Blue. Okay, so now I'm going to... Yellow, that's me yellow. That's me touching the scoop. Just going to calibrate it. Now, if I touch blue. and hold a coloured circle... It opens up a menu. So I have a, the top one here is a threshold, which I'm going to set in the middle. And if I touch this here, I can type in, let's say, hello, Amy. There we go. Done. So now I could also, you can see there's a camera icon at the bottom. I can also take a picture and assign it. Let's use the camera. Oh. Oh, it's the wrong way around. Wait a minute, let's flip it. There we go. Let's take a picture. There we go. Let's use this photo, maybe. Hello, Amy. Hello, oh, Amy. Just got my. So, so if I now press the blue. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. I can get that message. Now, one of the really cool things, if I go into the settings here, we're well, not there. Settings here. I can adjust the voice speed, the pitch, and also the accent. So I can, let's try Moira. Oh, hello there. And let's speed her up a bit, so. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. There we go. And each, of, the, each of these I can change. Hello, Amy. Um, please. There we go. So, yeah. Please, please. We could Green. This one to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Red. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. So it's very basic. It's, it, 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 not, it's not basic. It's a sim very simple setup. Um, and you can have five words or messages in there and you can play around with the speed and the pitch to get a, a, a voice that's maybe more appropriate for, for the user and also you know to make it more engaging um, and in this mode you can also there is a, a sw you can use this via the app to use it as a switch controller for other devices i think that might be uh, a bit too much for this this session as we're at the moment but that's skoog access it's a really very simple app um, gives you five, it, you know, it's not a full AAC solution by any means, but it does give you five buffers where you can type in text, assign images to those, and use them with the Scoop device. Hello, Amy. And you can also touch the screen on Scoog Access as well. 
So if I, um, you won't be able to see it, but if I just tap one of the, if I tap the, the green one. Thank you. Tap the yellow one. Please. So I can use the screen interface as well with that if I, if I, if I want to. So let's go back to our Zoom. There we go. There. So that's uh, school access. I don't see any more questions in the queue. So uh, any last thoughts from our um, audience today or from you, Ben? Well, my, my last thoughts are, I think the with Skoog, uh, Skoog, we've been, you know, Skoog's been around for a while. Some of you may have seen the earlier Skoog, which is a white Skoog with big colored buttons. Some of you may have those in your libraries. We've been active for quite some time. Uh, Skoog 1, the white one, it does require a lot more user setup. Um, and it also connects via USB cable to a Windows or a laptop. And it's a bit clunkier. Uh, it, it still works and is engaging and tactile. But it, it, what we've managed to do with Scoop 2 is really take those key activities that people want to do, such as the playing with sound in a kind of multi-sensory multi -sensory learning way, using simple presets, playing with music that's pre-recorded, pop tunes and class tunes that they want to play with, or using it in more kind of orchestra or band to learn songs and melodies, those kind of three key functions. We've taken those and built those into the app so they're really quick, easy and direct for people to use, whether it's a family at home or a teacher in the classroom or a carer in a nursing home. They're really direct, you know, it's very simple. You choose that function in the software and you're away. The charging port doesn't have a cover. I just saw that question pop up in terms of the a micro USB just here. I don't know if you can see here, just on the edge there, it doesn't have a cover that goes over that no um so yeah we it, it's it's really easy to deploy in that sense i think it's important from uh, say a library point of view that the software you know the apps for it for skoog are all free and they don't require any registration so that makes it very easy to deploy in a in a, in a loaning situation you just need to loan the device and the individual can then go and download the app on their own iOS device or so you can loan it with an iOS device uh, that they can use it with. Um, I think that's very important. We are offering a, a discount to the libraries and uh, I think the, the cases uh, make a big difference if they're being loaned out as well. That it's great to have something that makes it easy and portable and keeps it safe. And if ben, anyone... Ben, any do, you, do you have... Um any exchange policy in case people have the one and want to upgrade to the two? We, yes, we do. We, we have been offering a, an upgrade uh, in the past for Skoog 1, and we will offer a, a discount on, a, on Skoog 2 for an upgrade from a Skoog 1. What I would advise you to do is to, is to drop us an email at info at skoogmusic.com or uh, ben at skoogmusic.com and we can see depending on you know, how many how many Skoog ones you have and, and, and where you are then we can sort out a, a discount for that but yes we will offer an upgrade discount from Skoog 1 to Skoog 2. Great thank you. All right. And we're, we're, we can also offer um, bespoke kind of PDF resources for a library if they wanted to uh, you know we do small kind of uh, uh, like little booklet that you can send out with the library's details on with the kind of core support needed to get started in terms of instructions. You know, we're, we're keen to work with libraries to help people get the most out of the device when they when they have it and also to support a wide range of, of users in different ways. So any questions, please get in touch and do take advantage of the discount whilst it's there. Great. I don't see any other questions at this time. So I do want to thank you so much and to let our attendees know that uh, hopefully by early next week, we will have the archive of the webinar up. We will have the very kind discount and deals 
uh, listed on our website. Those are just for the Assistive Technology Act programs and your subcontractors. So thanks again, Ben. I'm glad we uh, finally got this together. I think we've been trying yep. since December or something like that. Yeah. And uh, thanks everybody for attending. Great, and thanks for having me. And as I said, any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. Ben at scoobmusic.com and we'll get right back to you. Great. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye. <laughs>